Today I'm going to be talking about one of the unfortunate things I had to do in my career. You know, one thing I, I pride myself on this channel, not only because I I can't really help myself, I've always been one of those people that's been very open about what's going on in their life, but because I think it makes good content for you as the subscriber to understand that not everything is sunshine and rainbows, not everything is going to work out, and that you do have those moments where you know, there are bumps. Sometimes you have really good moments. You make big leaps and bounds and it feels great. And sometimes, you know, you make a misstep or something doesn't happen as you expect it would. So today we're going to be talking about why I quit a job after three and a half days so that you can make good choices as well. I want to thank our sponsor for this video, MongoDB. If you're not familiar with MongoDB, they are a document-based JSON database, and it's probably my favorite database. It's the one I sort of, uh, after SQL, dove the deepest into in my career, and actually my new role uses MongoDB. I've built a ton of uh, back office applications the, in the workplace. I can't really get into specifics, but um, one reason I always use that database is it's very easy and fluid, and it makes changing it as requirements constantly change very easy so if you're interested in checking out mongodb uh, check them out at mongodb.com so obviously whenever you go and work at a company you know you don't want to badmouth the company themselves and that's not what this video is about this video is about evaluating choices thinking about those choices and handling consequences of those choices so um you know, I just wanted to be sort of upfront about that because although sometimes situations in life don't work out, it just means most of the time it wasn't a right situation for you. Very often as an employee to an employer or employee to a company, when you have these situations where things aren't working out, there's typically no malice in it. It's typically just a, you know, it's just one of those things. Maybe communication wasn't as good. Maybe things weren't emphasized of their importance. You know, these things happen and you have to, you know, you have to work through it a lot of times. So um, let's talk about me and why I think, why I thought this was worth sharing. Um, one, I, I want you to understand that this was, a uh, for me, I try to look on things on the positive, positive side of things. So I moved across country for a job. Uh, moved, packed up my car, packed up my house, put the house up to be rented, the whole deal, like in it to win it. Everything looked great. I didn't even like normally some people are like, well, why don't you go down to keep the house? And before you move your whole family down, be in April, three cats and a dog in your entire house. Well, I felt that confident about it. And perhaps that was a mistake. And I, I would say looking back on it, it is definitely a mistake because you never know what's going to happen. I may have been a little bit too optimistic, but I've always prided myself on taking opportunities when they come along. And it was a fantastic opportunity. Now, at the end of the day, this opportunity cost me about a month of energy, a month of time. So you have to pack, you have to get rid of some stuff when you move, you have to find renters for your house, you have to, you know, find a place to live, you have to plan your trip across country. Maybe you're stopping at halfway point, stopping at some Airbnbs, you know, you're going house hunting. There's a lot of stuff going on. For me, it's a month to maybe even a month and a half of prep work, of getting down there, all that sort of stuff. And in terms of cost of getting down there cost me about seven thousand dollars out of pocket which i make good money but seven thousand dollars hurts a little bit right it's um it's one of those things where you have to invest a little bit of money to get down there and then you go back and oftentimes for those of you who don't know when you go and get sign-on bonuses or money usually there's some strings attached where you have to be with us a year or you get it you know you get it in pieces sometimes where at three months you get two thousand dollars six months another two thousand they do it something like that it also depends um you know so and sometimes you get cash up front but uh in 2018 i want to say or 2017 when trump changed some of the tax codes one thing he changed was that uh going about taxes this is very exciting stuff one thing he changed was that um there's no more like relocation money it used to be where they could give you like five grand cash and you didn't pay any taxes on it now they give you a sign-on bonus because it's all the same thing and that gets taxed so maybe you get ten thousand dollars from a company to relocate you're probably going to actually get around seven after taxes so keep that in mind so anyhow um okay so i moved there and what what happens what what 
makes me want to quit. Well, there's a lot of stuff about about the company that I'm not going to get into. But at the end of the day, I tell you guys one thing and one thing only. And I, I typically practice what I preach. I, I really give advice that I follow because I don't know what other advice I'm going to give. Why am I going to tell you something I don't know what works? Um, I'm going to tell you what I have done and what has worked for me. That's what this channel has been about. This is what these videos are about. I just tell you what I do, which has made me successful in, in you know being a, a, a senior software engineer. And in my case, one thing I've always said is you always, unless it's your junior level role, want to go work at a company where you're going to be a better developer. That's what you want to do. Now, sometimes it's hard to evaluate that until you're actually there. Um, and and this was one of those cases where, for me personally, um, in the very limited amount of time I was there, uh, three and a half days, <laughs> I mean, you have to act. In my case, I have to act very quickly because once I get a renter in here, it's a year lease, and then I'm out of my house for a year. You know, I can't e evict these people. Um you know, I sign contracts with property management companies. I'm looking at homes as well, where now big decisions have to be made where I'm buying an investment property in this other state. Um, but within the first day, I knew that this probably wasn't the place for me. And it had a lot of challenges. But that's the thing is oftentimes companies tell you some challenges and they'll tell you they're working towards it. And um, there's one thing to have like companies tell you they're working towards something. And you, you can see that. Uh, another thing is when they say they're working towards something and you can see that they're not. And that's sort of what I felt like this situation was at the end of the day. And I, I've seen enough red flags to know that at the end of the day, give it two years, I would be a worse developer. And so that $7,000 hit or so, might have even been 8000 you don't really know these things because you just keep charging your card until you get home after such a you know 60-hour drive or 50-hour drive. It's... Uh, that was one of the worst experiences of my life. This is, and I'll be honest with you, this whole moving across country, working a job for three and a half days, moving back across country, by far one of the worst experiences of my life. There's very few other things um, that have been a draining. It is just a physically draining and emotional thing. I got back here. I have no doubt I smelled like dog because my dog Gator was in the moving truck with me, just him and I in the moving truck for days, moving across country, sleeping uh, in uh, truck beds. Maybe I'll share a little, uh, I'll, I'll post a little video at the end of this so you can see what it was like sweating, sleeping in the truck stop with your 50 pound puppy sleeping on top of your head, drooling on you. It was an experience. But my point is this is Sometimes you have to make those hard decisions where you show up to a place. It's not what you expected. It's not what you wanted it to be. And frankly, it, it's not what you in, you thought they said it was going to be. And you have to make that decision where is it or is it easier to leave earlier than later for me um, earlier. And, um, and and part of that was circumstances around it. The other part was that that's just the better decision. It's better to t leave a job and move on. Now, the only thing I would say to counteract that is if you're a junior developer. Um, the reason for that is experience above everything. And in terms of compensation benefits, they were all great, all that. But I'm talking about leveling up your skill and getting better. And as a junior developer, you just working somewhere and getting that experience on your resume is, you know, you could go do that in North Korea. As far as I care, it'd be a good decision. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to get up and go and get that experience. So um, I wanted to share that with you because... If you want to be a developer whose salary increases, who values in increased, whose um, you know status in terms of getting promoted and moving up and going from junior to mid to senior to lead to manager to um, architect to senior manager, whatever it is, whatever the the structure is, there's a lot of stuff you have to do, and you know with that comes great benefits, great pay, great you know you know um, depending on who you ask, easier job, <laughs> um, but. There's some choices you have to make, and oftentimes there are choices where you need to make the decision that you are not going to stay at a job that's going to make you a worse developer. And there's a lot of those jobs out there because there's a lot of legacy code that needs to be maintained. There's a lot of companies <coughs> that don't care at all about code quality or don't care about all about 
Um, they just want you to get it done uh, in as quickly as possible. Don't understand the consequences of that. And so I want you to think about that next time you go into a bad environment. Even if you're after you've accepted a job, you've put time and resources into it, is it working out for you? And if it's not working out, try and get another job. Try and leave. I, I you know, I was fortunate enough to know that I could get a job in about two weeks and um I did. Uh but maybe you're not in the, the situation. Maybe you can't afford to take a several thousand dollar hit. I understand that very well. I couldn't really afford this. That money that I was going to put towards it, that was going to be uh, help cl- cover closing costs on investment property. Now I'm set back three months. Um, but here's my point is if you get in that situation, think about it. Think about how to handle it and move on. And, you know, maybe you work there for two months and every day you're filling out apps to get out of there and you just say, sorry, it didn't work. And you move on. But Make sure your values of what it is that you want to be, which for me is a better developer, for me is to progress my career. Make sure you stick to that regardless of the situation because that's what's important. Because, yeah, this job, you may have gone and worked that job for a year, two years, but how much are you going to be worth when you leave? How good are you going to be when you leave? How much value are you going to have when you leave? It's going to be less, and that's unfortunate. And Chances are, um, you know, you'll go and become a project manager, a BA, or something like that, because you don't want to go do development anymore because a company killed that for you. And I've seen that to happen. A lot of developers, they're brilliant developers who go and work at these companies that tear their soul out of them, not because they they're mean, not because they're malice, but just because of the the choices that they've made to run their business. That's not necessarily what's best for the dev and the code and the software. So keep that in mind. Um, as always, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video, and uh, I hope you uh, comment, like, subscribe, share. If you're interested in any of my courses, I highly recommend the 100 Algorithm Challenge. There's coupons in the description below. See you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.